So this first one is another review of geometric stuff. I just kind of made it uh, a real life problem. So a ball is dropped from six feet high and then it's gonna bounce three quarters of its height each. So I'm gonna draw a picture of this so that we can have a visual. Yeah. So it gets dropped from six feet high. First is the read word. Okay, so this is from six feet high, gets dropped and then it's gonna bounce three quarters of that height each time. So it will look something like this, bounce, 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 until it gets all the way down to the Let me make that a little darker so you can see it better. I'm just not a great artist, so no making fun. So what we're trying to find, like what the problem is asking is what is the total vertical distance that gets traveled? What's a little weird about this is the vertical distance on the first one just goes down all the others have both an up and a down. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm gonna kind of leave that one off and the rest of these heights are gonna get doubled. Does that make sense? So like an up and a down. Okay, to generate the pattern, you just keep doing three fourths of what you had before. So the first question is, what is the next height that it bounces? It's gonna be three fourths of what it was before. Can we do a fraction though? That's not wrong, but... It'd be 18 fourths, which is nine half, which is four and a half. But if you write it as a fraction, that like a improper, I don't like that word improper fraction. That makes it sound like it's wrong. Like just a fraction, right? Because then you can see the numerators and the denominators. And then let's do at least one more. If you multiply by three fourths again, it'll be 27 eighths. Okay. And then like, that's going to be far enough. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cover up the six. I'm going to leave that off for a second. And we're going to write out what the sum would be for the rest of this. Okay. So your first one would be nine halves. That would be like A. So it'd be nine halves over what? Good. Perfect. One minus three fourths. Are we all together there? That's the sum. Now what I'm going to do is give that a big old hug and double it. Again, why am I doubling? It goes up and down. There's a vertical, like the distance vertical is double because it goes up and down. And then what I'm gonna do is add six for the like first initial drop. It's like you took a bouncy ball and dropped it from six feet and then watched it bounce. Okay. Uh, it, well, it'll eventually stop. <laughs> Um, in real life, I guess, according to this, it's, it's going to bounce infinitely, but it, like in real life, it's going to stop. And then we just have the job of the algebra of sifting through that. So let's see what we get. Um, and I think that the answer might surprise you. Um, so this will be nine halves over what? One fourth. I'm going to keep the plus six in there. So if you divide by a fourth, that's the same as multiplying by four. So nine halves times four, nine times four is 36. So that'd be 36 halves, which is good, 18. So two times 18 plus six, two times 18 would be 36, 42 feet. Isn't that crazy? 42 feet. Well, I guess you got six feet by itself out of the first drop and then you're counting the up and the down motion but doesn't that sound like a big number but you're like adding it would go get a bouncy ball and like throw it around the room yeah. well i guess we could always do that but anyway mathematically true all right so that was just a review of another geometric one just turning it into a story problem we're going to do two tests today one is called the nth term test for divergence and then the other is the integral test so we'll do this first one and then i'll give us a break and then we'll do the other one so here's your nth term test for divergence. You're going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of the series. That a sub n is just like the stuff that's there, like whatever the problem says. So if that limit does not equal zero, if that goes to any other number on God's green earth besides zero, then it diverges. So if it equals two or a half or three fourths or infinity, it's gonna diverge. Here's the, it not usually goes well. Here's the thing that people forget. If the limit is n goes to infinity for that equals zero, then it is no conclusion. You don't get to say that it definitely converges. It still might diverge. You would have to do a different test at that point. 
Okay. And just remember, it's called the nth term test for divergence. So it'll tell you if it diverges. It won't tell you if it converges. That's no conclusion. Okay. So that's the thing, like maybe, I don't know, put a star next to that. That's the thing people tend to forget. We're just going to practice that for each of these. These are like super quick problems. This is an easy test. We're going to do limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n. Basically, you just need to remember how to do limits to infinity. So what do you think for that one? It's exponential infinity. Like an exponential is going to keep getting bigger. If you en envision plugging in a really huge number there, it's going to keep getting larger and larger and larger. So what's the conclusion? Divergence. Divergence. And that is the one tough thing about this unit that we're getting into is you're going to learn all these tests and you have to remember what they all are. None of them's particularly hard. It's just when they all get jumbled together, then that gets tough. But we'll review. Okay. So same thing for this one. Limit is n goes to infinity of all of this. Do you guys know what the exclamation point is? If not, we'll do a really quick mini lesson on that. I've seen it before. I don't know. Okay. Let me go over this. Isn't it like everything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, close, it's multiplied. It's called a factorial. I like teaching it because it's like N. Like it just looks like the N is really excited or something. Um, a factorial means you're multiplying all of it together. So for example, this will be a really fast mini lesson on factorials. If you do five factorial, that means five times four times three times two times one. You're all just staring at me. Does it like... Five times four times three times two times one. So let's see what that would be. Five times four, 20 times three is 60 doubled is 120. I usually, because we're going to get to a point where you're going to need to know some of these. I usually recommend memorizing up to five. And again, we'll get there. What would this be? Four times three, 12 times two, four, three. V6, yeah, I should have started with the easier ones, but that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, that's not a function. It's, oh, it comes uh, very much into play in statistics. You may not have gotten there yet, but you'll use it in there. Have you done permute? Actually, this is off topic. Let me pause them. All right, back to over here. When we do the limit to infinity, the point with all of that is, do you see how they're the same? So that means you use the coefficients, which would be one half. What does that mean the conclusion is? Good, because it was not zero. Right, but we're doing a limit to infinity, and that's just who's in charge here. So we only look at what's most in control. And the plus one is like a teardrop in the Pacific Ocean. And it's just not influential enough to change anything. All right, so for number four, limit is n goes to infinity, one over n. What is that going to go to? If the denominator keeps getting huge, it'll be zero. It's like one over a gazillion which is zero. But what does that mean the conclusion is? No conclusion. We're gonna talk about ones like that next time. That's actually called the harmonic series and it diverges for your interest. Okay. Limit as N goes to infinity of LN of all of that stuff. So we're going to do the inside part first. This is n, this is n. So we're going to use the coefficients, which are 3 over 3, which would be 1. So you get ln of 1, which is 0. And so then what's your conclusion? No conclusion. So we did the limit for this inside part. They're both n to the first. So since it's the same, we use the coefficients, which would be 3 over 3, which is 1. And we did ln of 1, which is 0. So you always just have one plus and a minus 
when you do a limit to infinity, it's who's in charge here. You're using the most powerful part of the function. So like, for example, let me pause this again. I'll do one on the board. All right, and then for this one, do you see that negative one to the power n plus one? All that's gonna do is cause it to alternate. It's an alternating series. It means you're gonna have a positive, negative, positive, negative. When we do the limit to infinity, we don't include that part because all that's going to do is negate every other term. So we're not going to use that. So it's just this part. So limit n goes to infinity of 2n over 9n plus 1. They're both n. So what are we going to use? Which would be 2 ninths. So what's your conclusion? Divergence. Because it's not what? It's not zero. All right, so the other test that we're going to do is the integral test for convergence. The thing for this, and basically you're just going to do an integral, and if it works, then you're good, and if not, then you're not. Um, the stipulation for this one is, though, that the function you're using must be positive. That means above sea level, so like above the x-axis, continuous, so no like holes or asymptotes or any other issues, um, and decreasing for x bigger than one. Or I guess wherever it starts. I guess if, you're, if your series would start at a different number, you could start at a different number. But it has to be positive, continuous, and decreasing. Now, I'm only going to give you problems that are, but I think there's one in the homework that says, like, this is positive, continuous, and decreasing. And that's why they say that, because it's a stipulation to use this, OK? So what it says is the series and integral either both converge or both diverge. So what you're going to do is do the integral, and if it works, then the series converges. And if it doesn't, like you get infinity, then it diverges. That's how you do the, the conclusion. And again, you're not actually finding the sum. You're not getting like the answer. It's just, does it converge or does it diverge? So this is basically gonna be a review of the improper integrals that we did, which is good that we're spiraling in AP review at the same time. So when you see this one, we're gonna do limit as b goes to infinity. And you can choose a or b. Actually, you could choose whatever letter of the alphabet you want. Um, I just usually use a when it's the lower boundary and b when it's the upper boundary. These are all going to be like b is going to be the upper boundary. You're going from something to infinity. So integral, in this case, from 1 to b. Is this ringing any bells from when I taught? This was a while ago. OK, you guys have good memory. First or the beginning of second. Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, and then when you copy this over, just put it with x's instead so that you can put a dx at the end. And then basically you'll do that problem and see how it turns out. Now, because you can't just write the answer for this one, what are we going to have to do, guys? Thank you. U is going to equal what? You guys act like it's the hardest thing in the world. <laughs> Integral. Well, yeah, we are going to, well, you weren't wrong. We are going to do an integral. That's, so that was true. It didn't help us at all, but yep. Um, what is du? What is our derivative for that? 2x dx. We're going to adjust it with a one half. Because this is Cal PC and you've learned this before, I'm going to skip the middle step, okay? It's going to be limit as b goes to infinity. Now, you would need a one half out front. And what would happen when you substitute this in is you would have one over u. What is your antiderivative for one over u? Ln of u, which is x squared plus one. We just needed the one half out front for the adjustment. So one half ln of all that stuff such that one to b. And then it's upper boundary minus lower boundary. Just like kind of remember what order your steps go in. And that limit just hangs out out front. You just write that at the beginning of each step the whole way along until you evaluate the limit. That's your last step. Just 
Hey, Miss Cole, do we have to write that? Yeah, you'll be okay. All right, so upper boundary, if you plug in B, it's gonna be this just with a B in it in place of X. So basically just recopy that, but put B in there. And then if you plug in one, that would be one half LN of two. Once it's a number, you can drop the absolute value. If it's a variable, you should keep it in there. Once it's a number, you can drop that. And then like the very last step to the whole thing is you're gonna evaluate the limit. So limit as B goes to infinity. Well, as B goes to infinity, this gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. So where does that go? Infinity, it would be infinity minus one half LN of two, which is B, infinity. Ooh, so what is the whole conclusion to the entire problem? Diverges. So you just do it and see if it works. If it works, great. If not, then it diverges. Let's try another one. Limit as B goes to infinity, integral one to B. Oh, and I made this one almost the exact same thing so we could do a compare and contrast of these. What's the only difference I did here? Yeah, I made instead of like a variable in the numerator, I made it a one. That means a U substitution is not gonna work because when we did U equals X squared plus one here, do you see how the derivative had an X in it? That was okay because the problem had an X in it. If this won't match, like we don't have a variable there, like you can adjust a number, but you can't adjust a variable. That's a more deep seated issue. What have you got for me? How will we get through it instead? Oh, it is not gonna be that. But that was a good guess and your brain is still in the same unit. What were some other things that we had like in our toolbox? That is integration by parts. The U and the V thing, but that's uh, not this. First, it's uh, like the A and the V thing. Yes, well, there was an A. I don't know, I don't know what it is. A is gonna be one. I don't know what it's called. But... U is gonna be X. So du would just be dx, which means we don't have to do an adjustment. Which pattern was it? There were three that we did. I thought it's the A and the B thing. Or A plus the B, yeah. Oh, that's partial fractions. That's not this. Yeah, no, that's yeah. no, that good it's memory, a, though, that was a good, that was in the same unit as well. You're all in the same spot. Is it arc sine, arc tangent, or arc secant? Oh, Ooh, why is it tangent? And there's not a square root. Good. Okay. Limit B goes to infinity. Now, arc tangent would have a one over A out front. I don't need to put that though because A is one. So one over one would just be one. So arc tangent. And then it would be u over a, that would just be x over one, which would be x, and then such that one to b. I know you're gonna like hate this problem. All right, limit b goes to infinity, upper boundary minus lower boundary. So when you plug in b, it's just gonna be arc tangent of b, basically just recopying that with a b in it, and then minus arc tangent of one. Now, evaluating that is the tough part. I'm going to remind you of what the graph of tangent looks like. I like looking from a visual perspective. I like a graph. I know a lot of people don't like to graph, but I think a graph helps. There's a vertical asymptote at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, and it goes through the origin. This is your graph of tangent. And then it would like there would be another one. Do you remember this? Like an infinite number of these little wiggly things? No? Great. I mean, it's true. Okay. So now when we do limit as B goes to infinity, do you see how here's where we go to infinity? Where does that happen at? So this first part's pi over two minus, now arc tangent of one, that goes back to more like a unit circle pre-calculus-y kind of thing. Um, what angle on the unit circle is gonna make tangent be one? Well, why is it pi over four? They're the same, yeah, square root of two over two, square root of two over two, that gives you one. So pi over two minus pi over four would just be pi over four. So here's the conclusion. Since that came out to a number, and you get that pi over four is a value, right? 3.14 over four. Since that came out to a value, what do we get to conclude? Converges. But here is the big point that I need to get across. 
the series does not converge to pi over four. The integral converged to pi over four, but the series will converge to something larger than that. Let me show you why. If you start to generate the pattern here, if you plug in one, what it humor me because you have to understand this. If you plug in one, what are you gonna get? One half. Plus, if you plug in two, uh, that'd be one fifth plus dot, dot, dot. If you plug the first couple of these into the calculator and you plug pi over four into the calculator, this is gonna be bigger. So the series converges, but not to pi over four. It'll converge to something larger than pi over four. Are we together? No. I'm hitting that hard because I think there's a homework one that says, is it greater or smaller? So just bringing it up. All right, let's try another one. Limit as B goes to infinity integral one to b they're going to start that way e to the negative x dx again just recopy the thing but with an x thing. so limit as b goes to infinity now we need an antiderivative for e to the negative x but with a what in front of it a neg good negative e to the negative x such that one to be. Technically, that was a U substitution, but we just did the adjustment in our heads with that negative, which I encourage you to do. You can just do the adjustment in your head then be yeah. All right, so now what step are we on? Plugging in boundaries. So upper boundary minus lower boundary. And I'm going to fix the negative exponent so we can see this a little bit better. This would be negative one over e to the power b. You can write negative e to the negative b if you want, but when you go to do the limit, it'll make more sense if you can look at it this way. All right, and then if you plug in one, it'll be negative one over e to the one, which would just be e. I guess you can put a little one in there if you want. And then your last step is to evaluate the limit. So as b gets larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, what does this first part go to? That'll be zero, because you'd have like one gazillionth, which is like nothing. These negatives are going to cancel, so plus one over e, and so you get one over e. So what's the conclusion to the whole thing? Good. Why does it converge? Like you got a value, like you got something finite, okay? Will the series converge to one over e? No, it will converge to something bigger. And if you write out the first few numbers of this and put them in the calculator and you put one over E in the calculator, this will be bigger, okay? Let's just try one more. Limit B goes to infinity, integral one to B, and then just recopy the thing with X's instead. This one's also gonna be a U substitution. What would we let u equal? Which piece of that? Good, negative x squared. du is negative two x dx. I feel like if I tell you guys it's u substitution, you're all fine. Yeah. So if you get stuck on your AP exam, just be like, well, I guess it's u substitution. All right, and then we would adjust with negative one half. Good. And do you see how there's an x dx in the problem? Like that matches? Like that part has to line up. Again, you guys are Cal PC. This is advanced. I'm going to skip this step. Okay. You would have a negative one half for your adjustment. And when you do the substitution, it would be e to the u. So what's the antiderivative of e to the u? Yeah, e to the u. So it would be e to the negative x squared. And then such that one to be. E is easy because it's its own derivative and its own antiderivative. We just have an adjustment with that negative one half then. All right, and then what? What step are we on now? Upper minus lower, perfect. And I'm going to fix the negative exponent because when you go to do the limit, it's easier if it's written like a fraction. So this is going to come back down to the denominator. It'll be negative one over two e to the power b squared and then when you plug in one it'll be negative one over 
two, it would be e to the one squared, which would just be one squared is just one, right? Are you guys coming with me on that? Yeah. Got really quiet. Like it would be e to the one squared, but one squared is just one. So it would be one. You can put a one there if you want. All right. And then the last thing is to evaluate the limit. So as b goes to infinity, this denominator is going to get larger and larger and larger and larger. So this part goes to zero, negatives cancel. And so you get one over two e, which remember e is a number, it's 2.7. So since we got a finite number, the series converges, but not to one over two e, it would be something larger than that. 